Uh, yeah, hello everybody. Uh, it's always great to see uh, so many Knicks enthusiasts in one place. Um, my name is Luke Perkins. I work for, for Determinate Systems. Um, you've seen a couple of my colleagues so far at the, at the conference. And uh, you can just find me at, at, at Luke Perkins on pretty much every platform on the internet. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about a little, uh, a fun little thing I put together a few months ago called NewEnv. And that's it's an experimental builder for Knicks. Uh, it uses a, a fun zesty new shell uh, um, called new shell instead of bash for realizing derivations. So first I want to uh, start a little bit small and talk about derivations. So uh, in the Nix language, what, you, what you're essentially doing most of the time is you're assembling like small data. So you have strings and numbers and, and integers and booleans and arrays and, and things like, like you have in other languages. Uh, and then on top of that, things get interesting when you start building attribute sets. And that's usually what we're doing in Nix is we're building big big honking um, attribute sets. Uh, and you can, of course, uh, nest attribute sets to any depth you want. Then, on top of these core data types, you get some built-in functions for things like working with strings and functional programming constructs, like mapping and filtering. And finally, you can create custom functions to provide, uh, to provide higher order logic. Now, so far, uh, in this sense, Nix is a lot like some other configuration languages, like Q or, J or JSONnet or DAL or things like that. So you run a program, it assembles some data together, and then you configure some uh, external system with it. But Nix makes this, this wonderful magical leap beyond these configuration languages through derivations. And what derivations essentially do is they, um, is they transform data that you've created in, uh, uh, using the Nix language into real file system state in a process called realization. And make sure to always use the, the British spelling with the S, of course. Uh, and that file system state can be as big and gnarly and dense and complex as you want it to be. Uh, so here, um, I'll just show a quick example. We see a simple um, sort of hello world derivation that uses bash to write uh, a, a hello.txt you know, a, a hello file into the file system. So to me, um, derivation is, is kind of the beating heart of Nix. So development environments and, and Nix OS systems and Nix packages and all the stuff that, that Nix gives us and brings into the world is a product of derivations and, and the creation of files on disk. So one thing that, that you'll notice here is that in principle, the builder can be just about any program that, that can take the data provided by Nix and, and produce file, state, file system state with it. So you could have builders written in, in Ruby or Perl or Java or PHP or probably even BrainFuck, but I, I have not verified this personally. Um, most derivations out there in the real world don't use Java or PHP, of course. Instead, they use the standard environment offered by Nix packages. So the standard environment has, has this handy wrapper function around the baseline derivation function called make derivation, which does a lot of, uh, which does a lot of heavy lifting, as we'll see. So, so all the Nix packages functions that you use for packaging are, are I think, I think all, are, are wrappers around this make derivation function. So you, you get things like build go module and build Rust package and things of that sort. Now, as you know, the standard env uses bash as its builder, and this does have uh, certain advantages and disadvantages. So on the advantages side, I guess I can slow down a little bit. Uh, on the advantages side, so bash is definitely, uh, it's, it's a known quantity. Um, it, it rarely changes in any significant way. Uh, it's, it currently runs on probably billions of machines, um, and, and many, many thousands of people know it, and some even know it quite well. But Bash, yeah, very few. Um, but Bash is also pretty dry, uh, and, and not in the good like DRY way, but just dry. Uh, and it doesn't do a lot on its own. Uh, it kind of just parses strings and then and, and calls calls out to other programs. So to accomplish anything uh, with Bash, you need to use things like the core utils, you know, so find and grep and and ack and sed and things like that. And of course, there are lots of um, lots of not so fun foot guns surrounding string, interpol string interpolation, the lack of a type system, function arguments, and, and lots of other stuff in Bash. So New Shell is a, is a recent uh, experimental shell written in Rust that that I think seeks to go pretty decisively uh, beyond Bash and to open up a kind of new paradigm. Uh, I say experimental because it's it's pre 1.0 and it's still under very heavy development. So. Uh, it's, it's 
constantly having breaking changes and, and all that good stuff. So, you know, make sure to pin your versions and, and things of that sort. So I do, however, strongly encourage you to try it out because it's, I think it's, it's really remarkable. So some of the, some of the features, I, I mean, I could talk about like new shell features for, for hours, but some of the ones worth mentioning are that, um, it, uh, oh, I probably should have gone through these. Uh, yeah, highly expressive bordering on a program link. Uh, some of the features are, um, it has built-in support for, for common data formats that, that we use nowadays. So JSON and YAML and TOML and CSV, um, even for some more niche things like SQLite and data frames. Um, and that means you can sort of immediately toss out a bunch of shell utilities like, like JQ and J, whatever the YAML JQ is and, and all that good stuff. Um, you also get some nice functional programming constructs inside of, of new shell, like map and sort and reduce. So, so here you see an example filter function, um, which, um, so this will yield the number 10, of course, um, because, uh, yeah, so you're just basically finding the, the, the even numbers in this list. And, uh, and, I mean, let's be honest, this would be like a nightmare in bash. Um, you also get some, uh, and I think this is kind of like the, like the key point, is that you get type safety in function calls, uh, which we'll see more of in a minute here. So, um, and, and not just type safety, but you get some, some really useful built-in types. So you get records, which are kind of, you know, basically like objects in JavaScript and other languages, and you get some other things like ranges and tables, and you get a special date, um, a special date type and, and things like that. And finally, sort of a, um, as I intimated before, um, you don't really need core utils with, uh, with New Shell. Um, all the basic utilities that you need are included inside of it, and they're all built around a single set of, 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 data, inter of, of data interfaces that, that interoperate like totally seamlessly, which is quite nice. Now, you could say that this is a violation of the Unix philosophy where you're supposed to, you know, everything's supposed to do one small thing and do one thing well, but I think my position is that, is that uh, you know, providing a total, a totalizing shell environment is a thing that something can be good at. So, I th and I think it's quite good at that. So, um, so, uh, so here's a quick example of type safety. Um, so, I've, de I've defined this um, this hello function here in new shell, um, and it takes a name argument as a string, and it prints it just prints hello and the person's name through through interpolation. But as you see here. Um, if I try to pass the, the uh, if I try to pass in the current time, I get this helpful type error that shows me exactly, you know, like what the type mismatch is, where it is, and and even in my uh, in my shell, like you see how the date now is in red, so you even get some fun uh, some fun built-in stuff in your shell to to show you when you're doing something wrong. Um, so like like even as I'm typing date now, it's like no 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 red background not good, which which is quite nice and obviously Bash doesn't have anything of the sort built in. Uh, so again, in terms of type safety, um, uh, here's an example function uh, in, new, in new shell, a, a little bit more complex. So this does the same thing as the substitute function in the standard end, uh, and, and so it, it basically replaces uh, specific strings in, inside of files, which is quite useful in, in, in the standard environment for doing something like, you know, you call an executable inside of a file and you want to replace that with like the, with the Nix store path, you know, really common stuff like that. Um, so here you see the function inputs are all typed. So if you try to pass in, say, say an integer for the file path, then you'll get a type error and some, some, some nice, uh, nice colorful uh, output. Um, you'll also notice here that there are doc strings inside the function, and which is nice because what new shell does is it basically turns your function signatures into standalone CLI tools with their own docs and their own, you know, their own type signatures. So, so in the top image here, you see, um, you see autocomplete at work inside the shell. So you start typing in substitute, and it's like, oh, I, I think I know which function you're trying to call. But because it's a function, and, and, and uh, so it's a function and a tool, and then in the lower image, what you see is, is the help output. So it comes with a built-in like help flag, so you can, you can see what's going on. And this is, you know, this is quite nice, and I'll, I'll have another example of this later. Um, I could say a lot more about new shell, like I said, I could stand here for hours, but I'm not going to, I'm gonna move on to, to my own project now. So finally, we get to NewEnv. Uh, so NewEnv, like I said, it's a Nix builder, um, or a, a realizer, uh, with an S, of Nix derivations, and it uses this bright and shiny uh, new shell instead of bash. So, uh, concretely, <coughs> sorry, um, NewEnv is a flake that provides two Nix functions that you can apply as Nix packages overlays. So it has its own version of, of make derivation, as we'll see, and it has its own version of write script bin. And, and both of these work like pretty much exactly like, like their counterparts uh, in this standard environment. 
um, but of course with new shell instead of bash. Uh, so you can check out, um, so you can read more about new env um, on GitHub at uh, slash determinate system, system slash new env or on flake hub at slash flake slash determinate system slash slash new env. Um, the current status of, of new env is that it's, it's very experimental. Um, I, I think largely because new shell is, is, is you know, very much a moving target. It has tons of unstable syntax and lots of, you know, shifting APIs. Uh, and I, I currently don't really have any specific plans for it, but I don't know. If, if people, people think it's cool and it catches on, then maybe I'll, I'll, I'll invest some more work into it. Uh, yeah. So let's see what, what, uh, what new shell, or sorry, what new env looks like in Nix. So here's a very simple new env derivation. So, uh, so we call it hello nixcon. We pass in the, the um, um, the uh, uh, hello package from Nix packages, assuming we've you know set up Nix packages for our system, uh, and then we provide a, a message environment variable that gets passed into the actual build script itself. So, so here in the script, um, we create a, a share directory with make with make dir. Um, so, as you know, out is this uh, is this special environment um, variable that Nix passes into the environment that that represents the like the the end place where all of the your file system state goes. Um, and then we use this, um, the, the hello CLI in Nix packages and pass in the content of that, that message uh, environment variable. So it's going to pass in this, this very German uh, uh, greeting to, to the NixCon crowd. Uh, and it is going, and that's going to end up in this, um, in this hello.txt file. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's a different shell, but it's not, it's not too exotic. And, and I, you know, to me, it feels a little bit, um, you know, on the spectrum between like Bash and, you know, Ruby. Or something like that. It feels like like here-ish, um, which I which I personally kind of like. So um, I do. Uh, so I encourage you to try uh, a new env build on your own. So go ahead and, and run one of these uh, uh, build commands. So you can use the uh, the GitHub one or the Flake Hub one if you want. Uh, this will probably take a little bit of time uh, because Nix has to build it has to build Rust and then it has to build New Shell and then it has to, to actually run the uh, the logic, which is quite fast, of course. Um, but when it's done, uh, you can cat the, um, the, the resulting hello.txt file and, and get that very special greeting that I, that I presented above. So I'll give you a second if anybody wants to, wants to try it, because it's kind of a long uh, URL. Okay, I don't think anybody's trying it. <laughs> uh, so, so the log output should look something like this. Um, I did not spend a ton of time on the color scheme, so if you have better taste than me, uh, feel free to, to file a pull request and, and update this. Uh, I'd be, be more than happy with that. Um, as a quick side note, uh, uh, you can also run new shell scripts uh, uh, using new env. So, so like I mentioned before, uh, it, it has this write script bin function um, in, in, uh, that works just like standard env, but, but with new shell instead. So um, if you want, uh, uh, you can run a, a new env script uh, uh, using one of these right here, one of these uh, commands. And uh, personally, I, I found this really useful for, for polishing up some of my, I mean, I, I have like dozens of like helper scripts in my home environment. I've rewritten all of them in, in new env. Uh, that's been quite useful for me. And it's, at, at, at determinate systems, we've even used it for some actual uh, important things that will end up open sourcing down the road. Um, another fun thing you can do with new env uh, is that you can actually play around in what I call the, the, the sandbox sandbox. So you can actually jump into the new shell environment that new env itself uses to realize derivation. So if you run nix develop uh, against one of these, um, one of these flake outputs, uh, their um, uh, dev shell outputs, uh, and then you run the, this new env commands thing inside, you'll see a list of the custom new, new env functions that I've, I've provided in the environment. And of course, they, each of them has like the, you know, help. Uh, the help flag, and you can get you know the the type signatures and all that good stuff. Um, some examples would be like substitute and substitute in place from the standard end, which I ported over to new shell. Uh, I, I mean, in principle, though, um, you could, if you wanted to, you could rewrite all of the uh, um, all of the specialized bash functions, like um, like this one for like like wrapping, uh, like like make wrapper, and some of those. Um, you could certainly like pretty trivially uh, uh, rewrite a lot of those in, in new shell if you wanted to. So, uh, so how did I build this thing and just bypass the standard end uh, altogether? So it's really just, just one derivation function at heart. Um, so you see I'm passing in um, a name for the derivation, a list of packages, a source path, the current system, um, and, and there's a wrapper function around this that, that kind of handles like passing these in and defaults and things. So then I'm calling the, um, the new shell executable as the builder. 
And, and for the only argument in args, uh, I'm passing in um, the path to, uh, to new shell bootstrap script, which I'll show you in a second. So then I set this, um, so this is a fun thing. So then I, I set this uh, structured adders attribute to, uh, to true. Uh, so this is built into Nix, and it's important for reasons you'll see in a second here. Um, and finally, I pass in some builder-specific attributes that, that I'll use um, that I will call from the, uh, from the bootstrap script. So this structured adders thing is, is something I wasn't aware of before this um, because I don't think standard end uses it, as far as I know. But basically, if you enable it, um, Nix basically puts all the information available to the builder in a big JSON object. Um, and because, uh, because new shell handles JSON natively, um, that has, I think that has some kind of ergonomic benefits over, over just handling environmental, environment variables and strings. So, um, so here in the Bootstrap script, we finally start to see some, some actual new shell at work. So first, um, I open up this, uh, this um, .adders.json file that I mentioned before. Now, like I said, because you know, new shell handles JSON natively, so, so it, it, it opens this file, it sees its JSON, and it turns it into like, like a record type, which is you know, its internal sort of nested data structure. Um, I can skip parsing environment variables and just deal with this with this nice little object and, and its attributes, which which is cool. It feels a little bit JavaScript, it feels kind of JavaScripty a little bit. Um, so then I, I put the actual new shell executable on my path by finding where it is in the Nix store. Uh, and, and here you see um, I'm parsing the Nix store path prefix. So you see I've you know store path slash new. Uh, using some uh, some of the really nice string parsing capabilities in new shell, so I didn't have to do any kind of like you know regex or or anything like that. It just it just kind of has some really nice stuff built in. Uh, and then finally, with new shell available uh, uh, to um, the environment, this this new executable, um, I run the builder script that I that I previously passed into the derivation. So that script's about 160 something lines, and it's pretty straightforward. But I, I'll show you some highlights. So first, I find out where on the system my sandbox directory is using this Nix build top um, uh, environment variable that Nix provides. So then I open up the, um, uh, the same uh, .adders.json file from before. And as you can see, you know, new shell automatically knows it's JSON and, and does its thing. So one thing Nix does not do for you, and this kind of surprised me, uh, is it doesn't, it doesn't put the packages or the, the build inputs or the native build inputs or, or anything like that in a place where the sandbox can find them. So you actually have to do that yourself. Uh, so here I create a single path string for the packages by, by iterating through the, the array of provided packages uh, in the derivation function, adding slash bin uh, to each of them, and then joining them together with a colon. So I, I have seen the standard end uh, bash function for this, and it's, it's, it's a really ugly for loop that does like this string, like agglutination thing, and it's, it's not fun. But here it's a nice little one-liner, and you know, this will be like readily you know, recognizable to folks in functional paradigms. Um, and then I set that as a path. And so now I have all, all my packages available. So, so another thing that Nix doesn't do for you is it doesn't actually put any files into your sandbox. And this is kind of surprising too. This is like a standard end thing. Uh, so here I copy all the source files uh, from, from that path that you provide in the derivation. I, I copy all the source files into the sandbox and so that they're now actually available to the build script. So I have my, you know, my, my packages I can call and I have my files and I can actually start doing stuff. Uh, and finally, there's this extra adders um, field that represents any other attributes uh, that the user wants to pass into the builder. And so, so each of these gets set, um, and, and, and like I said, this is as JSON, so you could potentially just like pass in attribute sets and like, like you know, play around with them as if, as if it's, a, it's a, a record inside the language. Um, and so, so you could use this for things like, you know, Rust backtrace or, or debug or, or message. Uh, from the one before, from the, the example derivation. And finally, I, I actually run the build script. So, so, I, so I open up a do block, which is a, another nice sort of feature. New shell gives you like a kind of scoped um, uh, mechanism for running things. Um, I, I turn on error capture. New shell uh, then runs it with the design, you know, and of course things are set up. I've got my, my packages in the path. I've got my files present. Uh, and if it fails, the builder simply exits. Uh, so new end is different from the standard end because there's because there's only a build phase. So there's no configure phase or 
post-patch or pre-install or anything like that. Um, I thought about, about adding a whole sequence of phases, but, but I don't know. I, I kind of like everything happening in one, just like one big script and not having to remember which phase happens when and like, is that, does you know, post-install come before like post-patch? I, I, I don't know. Um, it feels like a simplicity win to me, but that's probably controversial. Okay, so, so new shell is great. Uh, uh, new end is, is relatively cool, but it's time for some, some sobering reality. Um, Bash is extremely lean. I think it's like, like okay, uh, Bash is lean. It's about 850K. New shell is over 25 megabytes, and that's after you've built Rust, and that's a pretty steep cost. You know, but then also with, with, with caching and Nix, you only pay that cost upfront one time. Uh, and so, so maybe that's reasonable for some use cases. Another problem is that new shell is, is kind of too good for its own good. Uh, it's extremely expressive, and that gives you lots of new ways to, to hurt yourself, basically. Uh, so, you know, you can do all this, like, like, fancy iteration and have all these nice records and things like that, and it's like, yeah, I'm, I mean, you can imagine the, um, uh, the possibilities. But then on the other hand, it's also super expressive, and, and I, I, I kind of like that. Um, and finally, new shell is, uh, is a brand new thing to learn. And it's like, okay, great. So I, I you know, I've, I, I've, I've mastered Nix, and now there's like this whole other thing that I need to take on. But then again, I think my attitude is, uh, was, was learning Nix worth it? For me, it definitely was. So, and I think, I think New Shell, New Shell is as well. Finally, uh, some broader conclusions we can draw here. So, first, um, this is an absolutely amazing learning experience. Uh, Nix build used to be this, this magical, like nebulous thing, uh, and now it's not. Uh, so if you want to, to demystify this, um, this, this extremely important aspect of Nix, I, I highly recommend uh, creating your own builder. Second, um, derivation and realization are, are not a closed chapter in Nix. Uh, standard end is still going strong, um, but we could choose other alternatives if we wanted to. Uh, so Nix builders are all, are all compatible with one another. Um, so standard end and new end and, and other builders can all produce file system state for each other inside the same build, and that's like no problem whatsoever. Um, and this means that different organizations or language communities could very well adopt some, uh, a more expressive or more type safe or more strict, more powerful builder to suit their needs if they wanted to. And lastly, um, I mean, derivations are kind of the beating heart of Nix. Uh, oops. And I think it's pretty cool that Nix at its core is completely agnostic um, about how you realize derivations. We do have a community, uh, sort of community convention to use Bash in the standard environment, um, and I think it's a good convention, um, but it's not a necessity. Uh, and I think that the fact that Nix can provide all the, all the great guarantees that it does while still providing this really, really deep freedom uh, is, is, is yet another reason to love it. So if you needed another reason to love Nix, I just gave you one. So that's it. Um, thank you, everyone, and, and happy NixCon. So let's do one question and then we are right. Then we are on to the uh, on to Zach. Otherwise, I'm sure Luke is going to be available for questions afterwards. Yeah, certainly. Uh, so um, probably like many people here, I thought multiple times about replacing the standard environment uh, language since Bash is a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, but uh, as you said, uh, Michel uh, has some heavy dependencies, so uh, it's, it, it, can, it cannot be a candidate. My probably controversial uh, opinion is that Tickle could be a great candidate, and I loved, I'd love to um, talk about that later. Okay. So my uh, question is, if you, have any, if you have any thoughts about that, uh, what would be your uh, preferred uh, standard and language? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. There, there, there have been, um, I know there's a discussion in, in, a, in a pull request or an issue somewhere about, about uh, using uh, oil shell, which is a, which is a less radical uh, departure. And I think it's supposed to be kind of a better bash with like, like, like a stricter bash, but also still quite lean. Um, so in terms of if I, were, if I had to pick today, that would probably be the best candidate. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not, not proposing uh, re replacing Bash in the standard end, but I, I do kind of foresee uh, kind of decentralization in Nix, and, and I think that's okay. So if I was like a big, if I was a big, you know, company and had like a huge dev team, I might, I think that like investing in a company builder, like might not be a bad idea. 
right. Thank you very much, Luke. Yeah. Thank um, you. Give it up.